In this video, we'll discuss anatomy of peritoneum, omentum, and mesentery. This includes peritoneal spaces on gross anatomy and CT. To begin with, peritoneum has two layers. That is the parietal peritoneum, which lines the abdominal walls, the anterior abdominal wall, the pelvic wall, and the posterior abdominal wall. Next layer, what we have is visceral peritoneum, shown in blue. Visceral peritoneum, as the name suggests, it will line the abdominal organs and the hollow viscous. This is the visceral peritoneum. Coming to the embryology, this is the abdomen of fetus or at 10th week. We will see the peritoneum and mesentery. Mesentery is nothing but double fold of peritoneum which is opposed to each other. Now this is the parietal peritoneum lining the abdominal wall. This is the visceral peritoneum lining the abdominal organs. Now the peritoneum has multiple derivatives. So this is the ventral mesentery and this is the dorsal mesentery. This is how it's divided, both of which have their own derivatives. We'll discuss in detail what are the derivatives of each mesentery. So liver, liver is developed from the ventral mesentery and its ligaments also develop from the ventral mesentery. Anterior to it, there is falciform ligament, coronary ligament and triangular ligaments. This is the anterior part of ventral mesentery. The dorsal part of ventral mesentery or the posterior part of ventral mesentery gives rise to lesser omentum. This is between liver and stomach. Let's see the derivatives of dorsal mesentery now. Dorsal mesentery is the one which gives rise to stomach, spleen and tail of pancreas. So this is the stomach, this is spleen. So between stomach and spleen that is anterior part of dorsal mesentery gives rise to gastrosplenic ligament. The name suggests gastrosplenic. Posterior part that is behind the spleen, there is spleno-renal ligament between spleen and kidney. Dorsal mesentery also gives rise to small bowel and large bowel mesentery. This peritoneal space in pink is the lesser sac and the one in yellow is the greater sac. We will see it in detail. That was the fetus abdomen in 10th week and this is in adult, liver, stomach, spleen, pancreas, both kidneys this is iota and ivc here the space between liver and stomach or the passage is called as epiploic foramen or foramen of winslow between stomach and pancreas we have the lesser sac between stomach and spleen we have gastrosplenic ligament between spleen and kidney we have spleno renal ligament between liver and stomach, we have gastrohepatic ligament. All are self-explanatory in their name. And anterior to liver, we have falciform ligament connecting to abdominal wall. Now, let us see what is omentum. This is also a double layer of peritoneum like mesentery, which is extending from stomach and duodenum to adjacent abdominal organs. So we have two types of momentum. One is lesser momentum, one is greater momentum. We'll see what are those. Lesser momentum extends from lesser curvature of stomach, duodenum and liver. This is stomach, this is the duodenum and this is the liver. And this in yellow is the gastrohepatic ligament. And this is hepatoduodenal ligament. These both constitute the lesser momentum or the parts of lesser momentum. And the foramen between or behind the lesser omentum is the epiploic foramen. So what is greater omentum? Greater omentum is made of two layers of peritoneum as told before. This will descend down from the greater curvature of stomach. Here in green we can see in the image. It descends down from the gray, greater curvature of stomach. It overlies the small bowel loops in the abdomen. 
finally it will go back the second layer will go back and attach to the anterior superior aspect of the transverse colon here you can see the attachment site here you can see it attaching to the anterior superior aspect of the transverse colon great momentum is usually visible on ct scan once there is some inflammation in the fat or once it became becomes more gray here is the greater momentum overlying the small bubble next we'll see what is mesentery this is also a double layer of peritoneum that will enclose the bowel loops it will connect the bowel loops to the posterior abdominal wall both small bowel and large bowel loops we'll see first we'll see the small bowel mesentery it's a fan shaped structure and it has a root the root is in the posterior abdominal wall it begins from duodeno jejunal junction on the left side goes up to right sacroiliac joint or right iliac fossa this will give rise to the fan like structure that is mesentery which will line the small bowel loops this is the small bowel mesentery the vessels nerves and lymphatics run through the mesentery to the small bowel now coming to the large bowel mesentery <clears throat> so ascending and descending colon are lying behind the mesentery transverse colon and sigmoid colon are attached by the mesentery transverse colon mesentery is known as transverse mesocolon it attaches transverse colon to posterior abdominal wall middle colic artery and veins and lymphatics run through it sigmoid mesentery is called a sigmoid mesocolon it attaches sigmoid to posterior pelvic wall here we have sagittal ct section we can see all the structures like stomach liver between which there is lesser omentum next transverse colon this is the transverse mesocolon and between stomach and transverse mesocolon we have greater omentum which is lying over the small bowel loops it contains fat hence appears dark next we have fan shaped small bowel mesentery attaching to small bowel okay next sigmoid colon is here and we can see the sigmoid mesocolon attaching it to posterior wall i'll just brief about how peritoneal spaces are divided the transverse mesocolon divides the peritoneal cavity into supra mesocolic compartment above the mesocolon and infra mesocolic compartment below the mesocolon next the small bowel mesentery here divides the infra mesocolic compartment into right and left halves so above transverse mesocolon we have supra mesocolic space or compartment which is further divided into right and left on right side we have right subhepatic space right subphrenic space and the lesser sac on left side we have left subphrenic space and the perihepatic space in infra mesocolic compartment or space we have right side and left side divided by small bowel mesentery next we also have paracolic gutters this also is having right and left side along right ascending and descending colon we'll see each in detail this is the right subphrenic space as the name suggests it's between the right hemidiaphragm and right lobe of liver that is it's below the right hemidiaphragm this is the right subphrenic space on axial and coronal sections of ct next we have right subhepatic space again as the name suggests subhepatic it is below the right lobe of liver it is between right lobe of liver and right kidney it's adjacent to gallbladder duodenum and epiploic foramen it is also known as hepatorenal recess or morrison's pouch here we can see on axial and coronal images and on ultrasound this is the morrison's pouch or the subhepatic space or hepatorenal recess next we'll see what is lesser sac or omental bursa this is lined by posteriorly by peritoneum over the 
pancreas left adrenal gland and left kidney anteriorly it's lined by the peritoneum covering the posterior wall of stomach and by lesser omentum laterally it has spleen and gastrosplenic ligament this is a space between stomach and pancreas that is the easier way to remember it we'll see on ct how it looks normally the lesser sac doesn't have much fluid it's collapsed this is the space between stomach and pancreas and spleen here when fluid is filled we can see the lesser sac very clearly this lesser sac is partially divided by the fold of peritoneum overlying the left gastric artery it's divided into superior recess inferior recess and splenic recess we'll see on ct how it looks superior recess is the one which is around the medial aspect of caudate lobe of liver inferior recess is between the stomach and pancreas and splenic recess is between the stomach and till the splenic hilum from midline till the splenic hilum is the splenic recess coming to left half now the left subphrenic space as the name suggests subphrenic it is beneath the left hemidiaphragm it surrounds the fundus of the stomach the splenic hilum and the space between liver and stomach so this here is the left subphrenic space on ct left subhepatic space is beneath the left lobe of liver subhepatic below the liver this is the left subhepatic space coming to infra mesocolic compartment or space this is below the transverse mesocolon so this is the transverse mesocolon the transverse colon so it's superiorly bounded by the transverse colon inferiorly extends up to pelvis and it is divided into right and left by the root of small bowel mesentery so this is the root it divides the infra mesocolic space into right and left halves at last we'll see what are paracolic gutters they are the peritoneal spaces along ascending and descending colon adjacent to them Thank you for watching if you want any more videos on anatomy and radiology please comment below and follow us on youtube and instagram